Duran Premium Cigars, one of the fastest growing boutique cigar companies, provides smokers a portal into the old Cuban tradition of the perfect balance and the lost art of progressive flavor construction. Roberto Palayo Duran began his career in tobacco over two decades ago in Havana, where his reputation grew within Cuban circles. The creation of Duran Premium Cigars has given Roberto the platform to introduce a series of cigars that offer the quality and construction that he perfected while in Cuba. Brands include the ultra-premium Roberto P. Duran Signature Line, Azan, Nea, and Baracoa. Duran uses a seed to humidor approach as all of their tobacco is grown in their farms and rolled in their factory in Esteli, Nicaragua. Rollers have been carefully chosen to carry out Roberto's precise method to ensure progressive flavor in each cigar. Duran Premium Cigars invites you to make their premium your standard. Ladies and gentlemen, episode 252, section. I like volume, Betty. You like volume? Let's do it. Ladies and gentlemen, episode Shoot. 252, volume two. This is the Stogie Geek section of this episode. I am your host this week, Joe Hozempa. We have an interview. We are interviewing Pierre Rogers from PuroTrader.com. That's PuroTrader.com. I also have. Co-hosting today, Joe D yes, is in the house, and we have Carson Serino from Serino Cigars yep. in-house. And Carson, you're going to be able to ask questions, too. Okay. So it's going to be a great episode. It's going to be a great <laughs> section of the episode. Cool. This, is a, this is the Stogie Geek section. Pierre, how are you, sir? I'm doing great, fellas. How are you guys doing? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. Uh, I started doing some research and started logging online. And I saw your website. It's a pretty fascinating uh, options that you have on your website. Take us Thank through you. that. Uh, how about I start with the origin story, how we came about with this crazy idea? Let's do it. All right. So way back in 2002, I'm in my early 20s. Uh, I'm broke as a joke. And <laughs> uh, I go to a cigar event in Boston, Massachusetts, Ooh. celebrating Avo's 77th birthday. Um, it was amazing, right? That's back when you could actually smoke indoors in mm. Boston. So I'm so assuming you went to Cigar Masters? Masters? It was actually next to Cigar Masters. Okay. It was at uh, Abe and Louie's Steakhouse gotcha. up in their upstairs private room. Oh, private cigar events. I like where this story is going. Oh, heck yeah. I mean, Avo's on the piano. Mm. He's rocking out. Mm. I'm smoking a cigar, eating an amazing steak. It's like a little piece of heaven fell down and landed in Boston. It was amazing. It's a day you'll never so, forget, I'm sure. Absolutely. An amazing experience, especially for a you know 21-year-old knucklehead from New Hampshire. I thought this was like the greatest thing that could ever happen. <laughs> Long story short, I ended up buying a box of Avo 77s, which was literally every nickel I had at the time. Mm. Put it into my cigar collection with the hope of just laying it down, not smoking any. I'm just going to keep it as a keepsake for this important night. That never happened. <laughs> <laughs> Fast forward all the way to 2013, 2014, and my collection had gotten bigger. I had moved to California, and I'm unpacking my cigars and moving into my new humidor. And somewhere along the way, one of those cigars disappeared. Out of the box. Really? I didn't smoke it, but it was gone. It wasn't me. Now, if I was in the region, you can definitely blame me because <laughs> I raid Paul's humidor every time I sit in this chair. Good man. Yes. <laughs> so that's really what started it was, hey, I need one cigar to complete this box. And this shouldn't be too hard. It's 2014. I'm going to hop on the internet and, uh, you know, someone's got to have it. Right. So I did what anybody would do. I call my cigar buddies, call a couple local cigar shops. I hop online. I'm looking at all the different cigar websites. Big fat goose egg, zero across the board. So I start logging onto the forum pages. And I say, hey, I'll offer someone 50 bucks for one cigar. Someone's got to have this thing. Mm -hmm. Again, came up zero. So I thought, well, this is ridiculous. There's a bunch of companies out there who have online humidors, if you will, where, you know, regular Joes like me and you can, can go on and we can build a humidor and kind of track our collection online. But believe it or not, no one had ever turned the brilliant idea of allowing those humidors to be searchable. Mm -hmm. So then I can look, Joe, in your humidor or, or anybody's humidor around the, around the world if they're logged in a Puro Trader. And so I figured if I did that and made everybody's humidor searchable, Hey, I'd be able to find my cigar. So, so that's where it started. It was never even intended to be a business. Nice, nice. And um, do you did you find the cigar? 
<laughs> People ask me that all the time. I'm disappointed to tell you I have found many crazy cigars. I have not found that cigar, believe wow. it or not. Wow. Wow. And I started smoking the box because I started giving up. Yeah. Yeah, I could. Yeah. So how many you have left in that box? Probably about six or seven left in that box. Nice. So you did, you did some good. You, you how long ago was that? <laughs> Since 2013, right? Yeah, I started smoking them probably about two or three years ago. Okay, yeah, yeah. When I just kind of given up the ghost saying I, I just can't seem to find these. The irony in that is the crazy, crazy stuff that pops up on Bureau Trader is way more rare than that box of Avo 77s. That's the that's the part that's so funny about this is that we've had crazy rare uh, H. Upman replica humidors, pre-embargo cigars from the 30s, 40s, and 50s. I mean, crazy stuff you could never find. And I'm just trying to find a box of Avos from 2002, and you know, no luck. <laughs> mm. Mm. That's. Uh... Well, if there's any stogie geeks, well, actually, it's irrelevant now, right? So if, if anyone has uh, 13 that this gentleman yes. would buy right? <laughs> to complete the box. At this point, I would probably save the box yes. and enjoy the memories. Yep. You know, My first thing I want to ask you has nothing to do with the interview, but as a musician, I went to Berkeley College of Music. I've done uh, two years over there. Like everyone else, or 93% of the people that went to Berkeley never graduated from Berkeley. But as a musician, how phenomenal was it to see Avo play? Because I've heard him play, like through through his stuff, obviously. Right. And right. then I remember being at Berkeley, and they was do talk about jazz and all that, and everything's jazz. And he's traditionally trained, right? He's, he's traditionally yeah. trained, yeah. phenomenal musician. But from a Berkeley perspective, I remember sitting in class. And I remember, uh, you know, even Berkeley says the Ramones go from jazz. Mm -hmm. That's another podcast maybe from another time, yeah. right? But I remember them talking about the, well, his, his, his real name, right? Uh, Avo Avedigian, right? And I remember saying, that can't be. Because like, cause I've, I've, I've always been smoking cigars. I was a fan. Right. I used to go to Cigar Masters when I went to Berkeley. I sure. sit there with my headphones and just noodle around and, and you know. I had to learn Oye Como Va. That's uh, 74 pages of uh, Guitar Hell. Wow. And oh. I had to play that on the, the, the Berkeley Performance Center in front of about 1,500 people. Um, I started sweating. Um, anyway, I digress, right? So <laughs> how was that? How was that just to see him play? Like, take us through that experience. So if you talk to Avo, he considers himself a jazz musician first. Yes. Yep. The guitar guy second. Yep. So if you think he makes good, good cigars, you ain't seen nothing until you've seen this man play. That's where he is in his element. It is, it is magical. It is so unbelievably natural and smooth. Mm hmm that it sounds like he's completely improving the whole thing on the fly, which is, of course, the perfect element when it comes to jazz. Sure. I mean, it's truly watching a master at work, and he is so relaxed and smiling. When you know he's a master is when he continues to play, someone leans in, chirps something in his ear, and he starts having a full-blown conversation with the guy standing next to him, without skipping a beat mm -hmm. on the ivories. It's yeah. unbelievable. Yeah, yeah. That, I, I, can, I, can, I can see the passion in your face when, <clears throat> when, when, when you're describing it. It's, it had to be just one of those experiences that, you know, you, 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 you'll, you'll never forget. You know what I mean? It's, yeah. it's crazy. And, and he played all the way up until he passed. Like, yeah. he just kept playing. And, 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 and I've, you know, even Cigar Aficionado or any of the publications – had said that statement that you started with, where he considered himself a musician first. Wow. <laughs> right. You know what I mean? Like, like, like I, am, I am a musician. I am not a cigar master. Just a masterful cigar I, I, blender. You know, you, you, know, you know what I mean? It's like, it's like one of those things, and, and, and it, it, it's crazy. It's crazy. So, well, thank you for indulging my question, <laughs> my personal question. I guess we'll get on with the interview now. Right, I guess so. Uh, Pure Trader, it, it's an interesting site. You, you, you have a blog there. Uh, you have a lounge there. Um, you, you, you have some cigar auctions going on. Um, you, 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 you can certainly purchase cigars through that. Take us through all of that methodology and, 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 and 
you know, are you going to add some more stuff uh, within the future? So we are trying to become the single largest peer-to-peer -peer platform in the world for cigars. Mm -hmm. We allow anyone to sell or purchase cigars across the website. So we've got major retailers on there. Uh, we've got brick and mortar stores on there, collectors, and then just regular Joes like me and you that will uh, come on and list their stuff, buy stuff. Uh, it's a fantastic place. And, and the idea is this, it's very simple. If we truly create an agnostic platform, meet, what do I mean by agnostic? No matter how big or small you are, the cost of using Puro Trader is the same. Mm -hmm. So there's no bias there, right? Mm -hmm. you know, and we allow all the inventory to be out there for the world. Then we really create pricing transparency. Then cigars are sold on a service and relationship basis, not just a price and a distribution basis. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so that's really ultimately the goal. And the best thing for the cigar community is to have more people on Puro Trader, which, look, I know that sounds wildly self-serving, but I like to think of it this way. Email is the single most useless piece of software in the world if you're the only guy who has email. Yep, yep. It's only useful if everybody has email, right? Mm -hmm. So when you look at the internet, and how it has positively disrupted all these different industries, right? Mm. Of course, Uber is a great example. Airbnb is a great example. eBay, Amazon, the list goes on and on. We are that component to this niche that everyone here is so passionate about, which is cigars. Mm -hmm. You know, you bring up... <laughs> You're like so in my wheelhouse now, right? This is like, this could be like a six-hour interview, right? Uh, we'll 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 get to to some of those statements uh, there. You have any questions? I'm just because you know after that after after he just gave us that mouthful, I have like six questions. So why don't you, why don't you go? Being an average Joe myself, I, I'm enthralled with the uh, the possibility of searching out uh, certainly cigar memorabilia and uh, you know what a what a nice form to have all together. And I'm also picking up a little. Uh, I'm wondering how far. It's New, uh, New Hampshire, I because I'm uh, picking up a little Canadian dialect, man. <laughs> Let's see if you get some hockey in the background. What are we working with? We're, so born in Exeter, New Hampshire, uh, raised in North Conway, New Hampshire, okay. so closer to Canada than Boston. Um, yeah, you, you, you cut me off in traffic, and you get this weird mixture of both New Hampshire <laughs> and Massachusetts. It's a, I pick up ours in some place and drop them in others. Gotcha. <laughs> gotcha. Do you have any uh, questions, Carson? Question, Carson? Yeah, as with the usage of the site, the only thing I could see, like, how do you handle peer-to-peer -peer discrepancies, especially being in an industry with, like, so many knockoffs, and maybe one guy thinks something's totally real, and the other guy might be a little bit more of a connoisseur. It's like, wow, you just sold me something that was, you know, a knockoff, and how does that all get resolved and... uh play out on the site phenomenal yes. question Carson. <laughs> Woo, do you, do, yeah. what are you doing next week you wanna, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. that's a that's a great question so separate that into two buckets so cuban and non-cuban mm -hmm. um and i say that because cuban cigars are infinitely more often counterfeited and yeah. faked than non-cuban cigars although we've seen non-cuban cigars some of the more popular blends mm -hmm. um being counterfeited as well so we can kind of handle that uh actually when any new auction comes to the site any new sale comes to the site someone on puro trader staff actually looks at it uh so we look at every single listing by hand actually specifically for, for this i'll be honest with you we are more we scrutinize the cuban section more for obvious reasons mm -hmm. the next step in this process is actually peer-to-peer -peer reviews. So we have that buyers and sellers leave a review for each other based on the transaction. So if someone starts selling counterfeit stuff, they obviously get poor reviews very quickly and they're put out of business really, really quickly. Similar mm -hmm. uh, like an eBay store. What's that? Like an eBay store. Exactly like an eBay store. Yep. Exactly like an eBay store. And, and I find that the invisible hand of the market is uh, pretty strict. Mm -hmm. uh, so moreover, if you are found listing, not selling, listing a counterfeit, so if we catch you, you're banned for life. There's no warning system, there's no nothing. 
And something that's unique about PuroTrader is we use a very sophisticated software from Verorated. It's a third-party company where we ID not only your identification but your age. This is really important because you can't have a fake account. You can't start a, you know, a bot account or a ghost account. You can't get banned and then just start another username like you can on Twitter or Instagram or something else. Only real people can be on the site of age. So 21 and over. So sorry, anybody that's over 18 that wants to buy on ProTrader. Uh, and you have to be a real person. So by doing that, You've created a very transparent community where you can't hide behind a fake account. You have to be of age. You have to be who you say you are. You're caught faking it. You're done on Pure Trader for life. And we've done this before. And if you still get through that screen, not only do you have the peer to peer review to worry about, but we often recommend that people use PayPal and you can get your money back through PayPal. Mm -hmm. So, so we haven't had any bad transactions yet. Nice. Uh, how long has the site been up? So we started in 2014 is when the site went live. Mm -hmm. We went from a freemium model to a, a, a commission-based model uh, about a year and a half ago. Okay. Okay. How did you get started with this? I know your college story and what, like, like what is your technical background? Yeah. Uh, I'm a finance guy. I've been in finance my entire life, institutional money management. So my clients to be on the, the wholesale side. So my clients were like Merrill Lynch and UBS and those kind of guys, CalPERS, et cetera. So um, I'd always been a finance guy. That had been my thing. And I just enjoyed cigars through my entire life, have a bunch of friends in the industry, help some brands, invested in a few brands. So I was always sort of dabbling in it, but it was never my uh, job per se. I was a finance guy. Mm -hmm. And uh, I kind of got had this problem where I couldn't find my Avo 77 and started this plunky little website where all it was was searchable e-humidors, as I called it. Mm -hmm. That's it. That's all it was ever meant to be. Well, the logical conclusion is pretty simple, right? So now that I searched around the world to everybody's humidor and I found what I'm looking for, now the next step is how do I do business with that person? Mm. So that's where I really had one of those uh, – Am I going to do this or am I not going to do this? Mm -hmm. So that's where I really had to plunk down significant capital and make an investment in the business, uh, a very big investment in the business, mm. uh, to make sure that we could do this um, and all of the technical side to that. Uh, a for instance is, without boring our, our listeners here, every state has unique tobacco laws. For sure, yeah. And so the site actually geotags you as a user – and only allows you to see and do what is legal given your geographic location. Oh, mm -hmm. Sweet as that. So nice. now you can't break the law. You're not tempted to break the law. And uh, so we, everyone is protected. We protect our users and we protect ourselves. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. Now you're running this all out in New Hampshire? Uh, actually, our company's based in Virginia. As okay. you might imagine, Virginia's got pretty uh, nice tobacco laws. For sure. Uh, and so that's where the company's actually based out of. I live in California now. Oh, okay. Okay. So it's uh, a little bit after noontime over there. Correct. All right. All right. See? I'm good. Well played. I'm good. Yes. Well, right. <laughs> right. 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 Um, the technological burden for manpower to um, manage, uh, police, mm -hmm. uh, uh, watch over. Help me out, Jody. No, the technological right. manpower right. for that. I mean, you, you, the, the, I'm assuming that this is a full-time gig now. <laughs> yeah, and that's some. It's two full gigs. <laughs> it's, it's two well, well, welcome to being a business owner, right? I tell people I work 12 yep. hours a day. It's a half a day, right? That's how it yeah. goes, right? <laughs> yeah, sure. Yeah. So, so you have a staff. Obviously, they're they're constantly either. I am not technological. Like I know Facebook and and I'm user end, but um, uh, you know, you to put the stuff they can. They can what uh, upload an image, put mm -hmm. a price tag, do all of that to the end user. It's pretty simple, I'm assuming. Sounds very user friendly. Right, for sure. right, yes. right, yeah. So, so it is user friendly. So, if someone, so if a Stogie Geeks listener uh, wanted to uh, uh, log on and sign up and and trade uh, yep. cigars, um, does he or she need, need to know about uh, uh, computers? Nevertheless, other than 
if they're able to manage through like a Facebook, I'm sure they manage to let to navigate through your site. Is that correct? You got it. So okay. yep. I had a rule when I built Puro Trader and I drove my IT guys crazy. I'm sure you did. That that was <laughs> <laughs> crazy, right? Because I'm not a coder. I'm not an IT guy. I'm I'm a, I'm a front end user guy like you. Mm -hmm. And I said to them. And this was the rule they heard it to death until their ears were bleeding. That's the word I was looking for. Fun yes. and user, Joe. You was okay. thinking the real. <laughs> <laughs> we have a three-click rule. Okay. You can go from anywhere to anywhere on the site in three clicks or less. Nice. So no matter what you're looking for, you should be able to get there in three clicks or less. If one of the Stogie Geeks listeners wants to start a profile on Puro Trader, first off, it's fast, it's free. And it's super easy. Awesome. Awesome. Good question. I'm curious. Uh, <clears throat> with the holiday season upon us here, anything uh, special going on on the website uh, you know, to draw the listeners in uh, even more so? Yeah, certainly. So if you're looking for unique stuff, uh, there's been so many recent things that have popped up that are really unique and interesting from accessories from VSB. That's actually a, a high-end uh, cigar accessories company based out of the UK who's got some amazing cool stuff. Uh, they recently joined us to more unique things from Tatawahe. So if you're a Tatawahe fan, uh, the entire Monster series is actually on there, uh, which is really hard to come by. Uh, the Black Honeys from Warp Cigar from Kyle, those are amazing. Those have popped up there. So some really, really fun and interesting stuff that are out there. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Awesome. What, other than the technical part, which that could be a whole other segment for another one of Paul's podcast, what are some of the, some of the, the, the marketing challenges that you face now? <laughs> You just asked my favorite question because Will House we really because the other two guests <laughs> from, from episode two fifty one and two fifty didn't like that question. They were like, "Whoa, that's a that's a tough that's a loaded question." You know, I'm, I'm sure it's, it's a challenge because because set aside the non end user stuff that that that's its own enemy. It's its own challenge. Its own business thing. business structure. You have to captivate an audience and keep people on on your site using it. Yep. So there's a three-step process, really easy. Mm -hmm. Get attention, get them into your sales funnel, right? So give them some value, and then they purchase something. Mm -hmm. that, that sounds easy enough, except as we know, we're in the tobacco industry where getting attention is almost impossible. Uh, you can't advertise in traditional, you know, traditionally on TV, radio, or digitally pretty much at all other than a, a couple of small uh, outlets. Sure. Uh, and that's about it. So how do you build an audience? Mm. Um, we have done it the old-fashioned way. We have tried to provide more education and more value through social media than anybody else. Uh, so you can follow us on any major social media platform that's out there, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Google+, what have you. It's always the same, at Pearl Trader. And what we try to continually do is provide so much value in our social accounts that we're able to get more eyeballs that way completely organically. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you, you're having a trouble marketing traditional media, television, radio, billboard. Correct. Because of the tobacco, the tobacco laws, radio right. stations might not want to touch it, et cetera, et cetera. So, yeah, so, right. so you have to, you have to uh, focus on when you're, you know, uh, any great advertising campaign needs reach, frequency, consistency, and being creative, right? So, obviously, you got the creative part, uh, the reach, you know, your demographic, 21 plus, you know, uh, wor worldwide, you know, uh, obviously, uh premium cigar or luxury cigar smoker. Do you do any machine-made stuff on there? Like some of the, the machine, or is, or is it just luxury tobacco? So we have a database okay. of over 10,000 different cigars from current production stuff to, you know, cigars from the 1890s. That's mm -hmm. probably our listing. Um, that's just in our database, right? That's not necessarily for sale, but that's in our database. And what that allows for is it prevents user error. 
So if they want to list something, they that cigar has to be in our database in order for you to list it. Mm -hmm. uh, that way we don't have uh, misspellings and, and people putting in inaccurate information mm -hmm. uh, in, into the site. It just it's one more way that we provide value and transparency. And if you're not interested in purchasing or even selling, that database is for anyone to use at any time. So think of it as a uh, a wiki cigar, right? kind of a Wikipedia for cigars. Uh, all that information is there for free that we, we have on the website. You can just kind of poke around. So there's a few things that we've done around that database, which was very difficult to construct, that provides us such unbelievable search engine optimization that it's put us light years ahead many of our competitors. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's helped a lot as well. Awesome. I, I applaud that uh, countermeasure, certainly, in uh, forward thinking. It's... Uh... Very uh, admirable. Carson, do you have anything else? Um, so it's totally international. Um, you sh all over the world? Correct. So we have users in every major developed country in the world, and we're on every continent except for, obviously, Antarctica. Those guys are bums. Yeah, it's too cold to smoke cigars out there. Do you ever have any issues with, uh, you know, shipping and things getting seized or anything like that? So we prevent U.S. users from purchasing Cuban cigars. Okay. So that's never been an issue for us. Um, we do everything above board. So uh, we're not trying to snake around any rules. So we have all U.S. state uh, and federal laws built into the site. Um, we actually hired a tobacco lobbyist out of D.C. in order to give us that guidance so that we made sure that we maintained the integrity of the business model and, frankly, protected our users from you know them making a mistake that they might not be aware of either. Uh, so outside of the United States, if we want to talk about users outside the U.S., it's much easier for them, frankly, to use Pure Trader, right? Everything is open. It's only within... United States, because we're a U.S.-based company, that there are more laws and challenges. Um, but from the user perspective, they won't know that. They won't see that. It'll be seamless. They'll go on there, find amazing cigars from Padron, Fuente, Tatawahe, Illusion, right? It just, the list goes on and on. Retailers, how plug, plugged in are they? Uh, you know what's funny about the retailers? A lot. <laughs> a lot. A lot. We could do so, a whole section on retailers, <laughs> and so could Carson. Right? Yeah. right? Talk to us. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna take the gloves off on this com on this on the next couple of comments here I because I'm pretty passionate do. about this. We got the right host yeah. with the gloves <laughs> off. <laughs> this bugs me. Small mom and pop cigar shops need to understand that two out of three of every box of cigars sold in the United States is done so online. Yep. So any thoughts that you have of trying to per, quote unquote protect your store from the internet is a fool's errand. Mm -hmm. What I found interesting that I completely did not expect when I started Pearl Trader was the major cigar retailers that already had a big online store looked at us and went, this is genius. Of course, we're going to sign on. So Mike's Cigars down in Florida, which is one of the largest retailers in the United States, huge brick and mortar, even bigger net internet store, was our very first retail customer. Mm. Now, it's a little counterintuitive, right? You would think a small mom and pop who doesn't have the infrastructure to build an online store, right. it's, it's cumbersome, it. expensive, yeah. right? They don't have any of these things. We built it for them for free. They right. don't want anything to do with it. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Well, and geographically here in the Providence Metro, we have about 38. There's rumors that there's going to be 42 shops, right? Mm -hmm. So it and and if you ever have you ever been to Rhode Island? I have. Okay, so you can drive through it in 45 minutes. So you you right. you got a visual. And I, that's a lot. And most of it, you know, in my opinion is only about four players in that industry, right? Yep. Um I know that I'm going to get hate me email on this. So if you want to email me, Joe H at stogiegeeks.com, <laughs> that's fine. Welcome. But, but, but you know, I welcome all email, right? It's Joe H at stogiegeeks.com, right? So, you know, it, but, but there's about four players within the Providence Metro. And when I st have a conversation one-on-one, -on -one, offline, non-plugged non in and, and with non-audience, they're all four online another shop in the same town because it's going to create awareness for cigars, and then they're all four 
the progression. All right. right. You also mentioned in, in the beginning of this interview about how a boatload of industries, my word boatload, right, uh, are failing because of the online presence. We're going to get to that soon. Right. But one of the things what I noticed that is when you have the small mom and pop and when I mean small, I mean, 80 facings in the humidor, you know, they seat 10 people, they get their regulars, <laughs> um, their words, not mine. They, well, we only market to blue collar, right? We only market to the blue collar person. You know, we, 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 we're, we're a small mom and pop. Well, guess what? With online presence, you can now say, hey, you've been in the industry for 18 years as a small mom and pop, and you're ready to make that change. Certainly, yep. And it's additional revenue. <clears throat> but yes. what what they can't get past, right? And this comes to me from a, a non Stogie Geeks co host standpoint. This comes to me from a business perspective because I actually, in my outside world, I have an advertising agency. So I've dealt with some of these people at various levels. And what they can't get past is that keystone. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So a cigar costs X, they keystone it up, they add on to whatever the state taxes, and that's their business model. It drives them crazy to take, I'm making it up, $2 off a stick, put it online, put it on Pure Trader, put it on their yep. website, and dump the box. Don't they understand that? And, and, and they don't understand that. You know? <laughs> and Carson, you're out there. Yeah. Out there. The only thing I could see with that is retailers bringing in stuff to like a high tax state like Mass, paying the taxes on it. And then somebody on the site not realizing why it's even further over Keystone because they already paid the tax on it. Great but, point. Yep. You know the workaround? Because yeah. I actually, one of my customers is a mass retailer, right? Don't ship in mass. Yep. You, have, you have 49, because Hawaii counts mm-hmm. as international with shipping, right? So you have 49 other states, right? Is my math right? Yeah. You have, you have 49 other states that you could market to that are not going to walk into your shop. Yeah, but if they search for it, if they Google it organically and try to find it, they now can become a player with Mike Cigars or with JR or with that. Yeah, they won't be able to dump the price and, and do that because of volume. But you know something? You're at least going to show up on the screen, and th- there are plenty of consumers out there Absolutely. who would say, you know something? It's four dollars extra. That's a mom and pop. And yeah. you know something? Yep. I was a mom and pop. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? I appreciate that. And, yep. and I'm, I'm a business owner on Main Street in Bristol. I'm not on Main Street. I'm on one of the Main Streets. But you know what I mean? Like, so, so it's like it's one of those things where, you know, you're getting business and yeah. you're doing commerce. And they just – I'm sure you've seen it when you've mm-hmm. walked into a bigger retailer versus the mom and pop. They get so afraid of that. Yes. We're not, well, we keystone everything. And that's been our business model for 18, 20, 25 years. Well, guess what? Your business model might not work anymore because getting back to how you started the interview, not only the cigar industry has felt the online um, squeeze, right? right? Your local hardware store, your local grocery yeah. store, places you go to every day. I mean, people can buy you know, toilet paper online and have it shipped mm-hmm. to their house. Grocery stores, some of the bigger chains – you can order it online. They'll deliver it to your house if, right. if, if for a price. But, you know, the price is a component of time. You know what I mean? Is your time worth whatever it is that, that they're doing it? And, and they just can't, they can't let go of that. So you're yeah. finding that the bigger retailers are all on board with, with Pure Trader. And the small mom and pops go on resenting you and talking to their blue collar workers upset that you even exist. So a funny point about price Mm -hmm. is if you think about your own shopping methodology, so if you shop online and if you've ever bought anything on any site in which there are peer-to-peer reviews, we call that social proof. Okay. So Airbnb, Amazon, eBay, Yelp, et cetera, right? Pick one. doesn't matter. What you might not realize is that all of us will pay more for a company or item that has higher reviews with a higher price Mm -hmm. than a company with low reviews and a lower price. So actually, when it comes to online shopping, it's a misnomer that price is the only thing that matters. That's actually not true. Reviews 
Social proof is the thing that matters most. People will pay a premium for that. That's customer service. That's something a mom and pop can do, not ultimately the price. Right. So I come back to the retailers and I go, hold on, don't compete on price. Put it out at fair market value, right? Put it out at MSRP, compete on customer service, create a loyal fan base through Pure Trader, and, and you're set. You're going to build this returning revenue stream from customers who always go to you because you treat them so well. Fight on that aspect. Uh, and so, so that's one way that you can kind of combat a little bit of that pricing uh, sensitivity. The other thing that I point out as a net benefit to, in particular, small mom and pop retailers, and this will resonate with you guys, a lot of these retailers have made a mistake from an inventory. They, they, they've bought stuff from time to time that sits on their shelves that they can't move, Yep. right? Um, maybe it's too expensive of a price point for their demographic. Maybe their audience just doesn't like it. Just doesn't really matter. They've got it. Well, now, instead of having to discount that box and effectively dump it on their demo, now you get another distribution channel and a much broader and more wide audience with any luck, you're going to find the person that wants that for MSRP, maybe even more. Yeah, right, right. Absolutely. I, I you know, I, I see it all the time. And, and, and I'm sure when, when Cost is yeah. on the road, he, he sees Because maybe it. on the flip side, the same thing happened at their shop, and they're the only fan of that brand. Exactly. And their shop discontinued it, and they've been searching everywhere for it. And yeah. Right. Now right. they have an avenue to go get it. Right. It's it's changed. It's changed. I mean, you know, as someone who, who's owned a business since two, uh, 2004, uh, I've been in the industry since 96, but since, since, since 2004, it's like I've even taken some of my stuff online. I had to. Uh, I'm not competing because yep. traditional television, radio, and billboard is a huge challenge when you're talking advertising uh, and, you know, uh, uh, social media presence uh, has definitely been a huge game changer for sure. You know, definitely. Absolutely. It's it's crazy. Um, take us through, we have a couple of minutes to uh, take us through what uh, the end user, good word, right? Go. Nice. What the end user <laughs> could expect from, from your blog. Oh, certainly. So our blog, we try to cover the entire cigar world. So uh, another way of saying that is we are agnostic to price and for location. So we'll talk about Cubans, non-Cubans. We'll talk about inexpensive cigars. We'll talk about very, very expensive, non-production, pre-embargo, crazy cigars, and kind of everything in between. Um, I'm in a position where I get to enjoy a lot of those things. And so I feel free to, to write about them and, and follow us on social media. And you can see some of the things that we get to say and do and experience so for people who say, hey, you know, I, I, I smoke, you know, just Padrones, that's my thing. Um, they're great cigars, but you kind of would love to know what it's like to smoke a cigar that's 40 or 50 years old. Mm -hmm. You know, you can kind of vicariously live through us there. Um, we also talk a lot about travel and some of the other things, fine dining, et cetera as I get to travel the world and, and, and do a lot of this stuff. So uh, it's been a lot of fun. I travel to Cuba every year. Uh, I travel internationally every year. So this year I've been to Paris, Rome, Havana. Uh, and last year I was in Japan a little bit. And every time I'm there, it's all cigar related, right? So you get to experience a little bit of what collectors are in the cigar world is in those locations. And it's very different. Mm -hmm. Are you going to IPCP? Have you ever been to IPCPR? That was my question, yeah. So uh, I have been to IPCPR probably about four or five times. Okay. IPCP, I really would love to do a booth at IPCPR. Hint, hint, IPCPR, if you guys are listening. Uh, however. They are. Uh, they are. Yes. They, uh, we are not a brick and mortar store and we are not a cigar manufacturer. Mm. Yep. So we don't fall neatly into a bucket. Uh, and thus, they don't really know how to categorize us. Uh, IPCPR is committed to protecting the brick and mortar store, and frankly, so is Pro Trader. Mm -hmm. uh, we just need to get IPCPR comfortable with what Pro Trader is trying to do, and we would love to have a booth there. That way, retailers could come to our booth and check out 
what it's like to be able to run another distribution channel, right? Get more exposure. How to use social media properly, how to build an email list and a following, how to do these things. We've all built it for you. So right. you can just come hang out and, and start using us. Right, right. Now for the retailers, uh, the price is still free, I'm assuming. Is that correct or no? We charge the same price for every single user, large and small, and that is to try our effort in giving no one an unfair advantage. There you go. Right? That's, there you go. That's JR's, awesome. JRs and mics are huge. They don't need another advantage. Sure. Sure. Right. It go. sounds mm -hmm. like it sounds like you got a fair product. I mean, you know, it's awesome. Soup to nuts, it's covered. It's awesome. Yeah. Nice. You know. Thank you. Uh, Pierre, can you do me a favor? Sure. Couple of programming notes. I only have the info at Pierre Trader. Can you give me your yeah. your email, your direct email? Sure. No, no, no. Uh, you don't have to do it online. When when we're done, email Joe H at StogieGeeks.com. Done. And I appreciate that. Any other questions? And one last thing, just for like the end users listening that are interested. Like, walk them through the basics of how to get started. Love to. Thank you. Yeah, great question. So, nice. log on to purotrader.com. That's P U R O trader, T R A D E R.com. Uh, there's a big red button right there on the front. Join Puro Trader. Click on that and start building your profile. Uh, when you do that, you'll have to enter uh, your credit card information as well as a little bit of personal information. That's so that we can age verify you as well as identify who you are. Uh, and then you're set to go. Uh, from there, the best thing to do is to hop on to your what we call our dashboard, kind of like your personal profile, upload a photo about yourself, a little description, uh, Add any cigars you currently have in your collection, just sitting around in your humidor, add those to your e-humidor, to your Puro Trader humidor. And from there, start poking around the site. Everything is free. There's no cost to sign up. Uh, there's no cost for an account. There's nothing, there's no cost to list a cigar. The only time it costs any money at all is when you buy or sell. That's it. Once you've done that, my personal favorite thing to do on the site is type in a cigar that I have an affinity for. So if you're a Opus X fan, uh, if you're a Tatawahe fan, click in, you know, type in your cigar fan. There you go. Nice <laughs> plug. Uh, <laughs> I appreciate it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you'll actually see a list of all the other users that already have that cigar in their humidor. With one click, you can now be looking at different Cigar Geeks humidors that are out there. It's unbelievable. Wow. That's awesome. Nice. Final question, Joe D. Uh, not, not a question so much as a uh, quick comment, but uh, Pierre, appreciate having you on and uh, applaud your efforts Thanks. moving forward. Wish you the best. Joe and I will be at IPCPR, and uh, hopefully we can tag you in for another interview, see where you're at six, seven months out. Yeah, really appreciate it. Absolutely. Yeah, definitely. Nice, nice. You got to come back, stay in touch. Email me, Joe H. StogieGeeks.com. Ladies and gentlemen, that was Pierre from PuroTrader.com. Visit them, sign up, check them out. And if you're a retailer, jump on board. Thank you, Pierre, for your time. Next Thank up, you. we have the Stogies of the Week. Stay tuned. Thank you, Pierre.